So here is a video to help you to revise a poem cut by Sylvia Plath. So think about the title, the word cut, which it of course uh, connotes a wound, but also a division, a separation. What a thrill, my thumb instead of an onion, the top quite gone except for a sort of a hinge. In the first quatrain, we are given the setting, so, you know, this, this onion and the title cut makes us think of a domestic setting where there's some cooking going on. Um, but the first line, what a thrill, and then the dash, which uh, creates a suspense, um, is quite misleading. There's a mystery to this. The top quite gone except for a sort of a hinge. Well, the thumb there seems to have been cut off, but there's no panic, there's no pain. It's a thrill, which is a strange way to deal with such a wound. A hinge of skin, a flap like a hat, dead white, then that red plush. So she's describing here uh, the cut in the thumb, and she's using very uh, simple diction, uh, monosyllabic words um, that show a sort of indifference, a uh, kind of matter-of-factness um, uh, as a reaction to the cut and the word red plush is almost a sensual um, enjoyable word it's it's velvet a red plush dead white is of course a, a pun because if you say something is dead something it means it's very something but here she's the pun is is also to do with uh, the, the connotations with um, self-harm and, and, and suicide. Little Pilgrim, the Indians axed your scalp. Your turkey wattle carpet rolls. So here she's uh, reminding us of the history of America and how the Pilgrim Fathers arrived with, on the Mayflower in the 17th century and, um, well, you know, the story of Thanksgiving is that they were welcomed and shown the resources of the land to help them survive the winter. But she's saying the Indians axed your scalp, which is a stereotypical, um, you know, cowboys and Indians um, mis misrepresentation of the history. And then she also reminds us of Thanksgiving through the turkey um, and she's talking about the wattle of the turkey to describe the way the blood is flowing out of the uh, thumb uh, as a carpet rolling out and the turkey wattle, which is an ugly comical image to describe her thumb. So the carpet rolls straight from the heart. I step on it clutching my bottle of pink fizz. So this carpet that she described as red plush, the velvet carpet, rolling straight from the heart is at once describing the anatomical circulation of the blood coming from the heart and out through the wound of the thumb. But it's also introducing a note of the emotions uh, that has changed now. There's a shift from the matter-of-fact stanzas of the monosyllables at the start. And now we're going into an emotional uh, response. She says, I step on it. I step on what? The carpet? Yes, I suppose. Or her heart? Or, you know, what is being stepped on here? There's an ambiguity. And she says, clutching my bottle of pink fizz. Again, ambiguity, because that bottle could be the bottle of champagne that's associated with celebrities. And this poem was written in the year in which the glamorous Marilyn Monroe shown here on the arm of Humphrey Bogart, um, was uh, driven to suicide um, for you know being in the limelight uh, of the press. Um, and uh, Pink Fizz could also refer to the medication that Sylvia Plath was known to be taking for, uh, you know, to be able to sleep for her depression and her mental illness. This was a time at which she had discovered her uh, husband's infidelity, and uh, she was famous, he was famous, Ted Hughes was well known in all the literary circles of London, and of course 
their relationship was in the limelight and uh, the media was fascinated by uh, by everything that was going on. So uh, Sylvia Plath is making an analogy here. Um, the connotations of the wound in her thumb have now turned to something far more deep and personal. A celebration this is. Out of a gap, a million soldiers run, redcoats, every one. So in this stanza, she's likening the blood to the redcoats, the, the British army uh, who fought against the Americans in the War of Independence. And uh, she's reminding us constantly of her American identity. And at this time, she's living in Devon in the cottage that she and her husband had uh, brought together and where she was bringing up her two children, Nicholas and Frida, who were very, very young at the time. Um, and her blood, her American blood, however, is here described as British soldiers. So it's showing here the tension she has with her identity. Um, and a celebration, again, is ironic, isn't it, with the, the wound in the thumb being likened to a celebration. And the gap that she refers to, it could be this gap, this irony of uh, her being an American in the rural English countryside where she doesn't quite fit. Whose side are they on? And she's referring here to taking sides. Is it between her and her husband in the media? You know, whose side are they on? And then she seems to address her little man. Oh, my homunculus. I am ill. A homunculus is a kind of mythical little man. Um, and uh, is she referring to her thumb here? Or is she referring to her husband? I am ill. I have taken a pill to kill. And notice there the internal rhyming, um, which creates a, a, a kind of nauseous uh, dizziness. Um, just another point on the red blood corpuscles, which are often referred to when speaking to children as red soldiers, by the way. So these pills that she's taken to kill the thin, papery feeling. So this thin, papery feeling reminds us of, uh, you know, another poem where the, the, the word paper is used. Um, is it morning song? This word keeps coming back. It's one of these motifs um, relating to her role as a poet. But it's also this fragility, um, the, 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 the paper that is so thin uh, relating to her mental state. And she's now addressing directly someone, saboteur, kamikaze man. Well, could it be Ted Hughes who has sabotaged the marriage? Hmm. Kamikaze fighters of the Second World War, of course, associated with Pearl Harbor, um, the bombing of uh, the American fleet, uh, which triggered the uh, bombing of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and the end of the Second World War. So uh, catastrophic events there. The stain on your gauze, Ku Klux Klan, Babushka, darkens and tarnishes. So, again, she's making a reference to something horrific here in American history. The Ku Klux Klan, who in the 20s and 30s were notorious for their lynchings of black young men, very often uh, vigilante killings um, and false accusations. Uh, so this racist um, ferocity, a bit like the, the Nazis. Um, and, and this could be simply because she's, the connotation is with the shape of the bandage on her thumb, that the, the hats of the Ku Klux Klan reminds her of that. She has these very dark associations in her mind. And also Babushka, uh, which is this Russian grandmother, um, you know, this photograph shows her wearing a red scarf, maybe the blood, the red scarf. These are all kind of free associations, which is a psychoanalytical 
um, technique to get people to deepen their understanding of their um, state of mind and thought processes. So the 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 babushka darkens and tarnishes. This is perhaps describing the way the blood is um, f floating and and flowing into the bandage. The bald pulp of your heart confronts its small mill of silence. How you jump. Notice again uh, this um, kind of assonance, this internal assonance, pulp and jump. And uh, this uh, trepanned veteran, dirty girl, thumb stump, once again, jump, thumb stump. Uh, these very harsh and clumsy sounds. Um, which draw our attention to uh, a feeling of mutilation and an image of mutilation. Being trepanned was a, a very primitive treatment for depression and, and, and headaches. So they would drill a hole into a skull, and here are some examples found. Um, of course, that's a, it's, a, it's a violation and a mutilation, uh, which is ironically designed to treat um, to, to treat illness, um, but actually makes it worse. Um, now she's referring to her thumb as a dirty girl, or is it herself or her husband's lover? We don't know. It's all very mixed up and ambiguous. So all these references to the American uh, history um, makes us think about her own American identity with the American Civil War and the War of Independence, the First Nation Americans welcoming the Pilgrim Fathers, the Ku Klux Klan, the Vietnam Vets. And she seems to be creating associations to her American versus her current British connections. And she's also evoking a senseless cruelty in relation to her personal experience of betrayal. So the cruelty in American history, perhaps, uh, in her own DNA. And Marilyn Monroe, a reminder, died in 62, and the red carpet reference, as well as the overdosing on medication, would indicate that Plath was thinking of this figure and perhaps associating herself with Marilyn Monroe. This is written in the confessional style, and the com Professional style was really developed by Plath as a new way of writing poetry, influenced, of course, by Anne Sexton. But it's the the, the outpouring of emotion in poetry, and this, of course, in this poem, it's following the betrayal um, of Hughes with um, his lover Asia Weevil, who was a friend of the family. And so, this minor physical injury of the of the thumb. Is a, a, a connotation has connotations of much deeper wounds, and these psychological connotations and free associations are also related to the post-war era. In that psychoanalysis was extremely um, fashionable uh, at the time, particularly Freud. Uh, some people have read this poem as uh, relating to the castration uh, complex idea uh, of Freud. Uh, an anger against male-dominated society and the double standard in which men were allowed to follow their sexual desires without judgment, um, unlike women. 